Scout rank right after he came into the troop in May of 05. Tenderfoot, April 06. Second class, June of 07. First class, January 09. Star, August of 09. Um, life in March of 11. During that time, he acquired many merit badges. I was going to write them all down, but I didn't have a paper. <laughs> he took uh, youth leadership training, 
worked one week of summer camp as a counselor in training, then several years of count, uh, camp counselor at Camp Tepaito, while maintaining various troop leadership positions. I scribed for a year, assistant senior patrol leader for a year, senior patrol leader for two and a half years, and also coming up with several gourmet menus for us that his mother probably voted <laughs> um, for camp outs. Then he was ready to start working on his Eagle rank. At this time, he was given the position of junior assistant scoutmaster, and he continued to train the other boys in the many skills he had already learned himself, along with showing them what they needed to become better leaders themselves. His first idea for Eagle Scout Project didn't quite work out, but he hung in and began to work on his next idea. This time, it worked out. After designing, planning, and coming up with his materials, he had already found the spot to, and, and talked to the necessary people to get the okay for his project. He was now ready for the project to begin. He worked his way through a few difficult points and finished his project. His project was a pair of murals at his school, the International Academy of Flint, which you may have seen on television today with all those kids jumping up and down. <laughs> uh, having fun. Each had a theme that gave positive influence to all that passed them. If you go into the school, it's on the left side of the school entrance, One's right there, and the next one's just down the hall, and you see them, and they, uh, that's where they're at. <laughs> we also have many pictures, and, and Mr. Herring's got a slideshow here that I don't know what all he's got. Oh, at that, at that point, he passed all the necessary requirements of the National Boy Scout Council, and later passed his Eagle Board of Review with flying colors. As Paul's Scoutmaster, I hereby congratulate Paul Harlan nice. Herring, Jr. <laughs> for acquiring uh, uh, the highest Esquire. rank given in Boy Scouts, the rank of Eagle Scout. At this time, we would like to bring up some presenters of awards this for all notice, acknowledging his Eagle Scout. Um, at this time, we'd like to bring up Bernie Mayhew, or um, Mayhew. Mayhew. Yeah. <coughs> First one is a uh, is a letter from uh, National Boy Scouts of America. It says, "Congratulations, you are an eagle. With the completion of the requirements, you have mastered many skills and made the Scout Oath and Law part of your life. Eagle Scout exemplifies hard work, strong character. You now participate fully in their proud tradition and heritage. The eagle rank is the beginning, not the end of your journey. As an eagle Scout, much is expected of you in your community, in your religious faith, in your family, and in scouting." Life is filled with expectations, and with each new recognition, you are obligated to seek 
broader horizons of service. Scouting guides your life today. Because it does, you are better prepared to guide the future. Our prayers are with you and your future success. Sincerely, Wayne M. Perry, President, and Wayne Brock, Chief Scout Executive. At this time, I'd like to bring up another presenter, um, Bobby Beasley for the Marine Corps League. Um, what I have uh, for Paul tonight is a letter from the director of the Marine Corps League of Michigan. The letter reads, Paul, becoming an Eagle Scout is something that is not just given to someone. It is earned. Just like in the Marine Corps, the Eagle Globe and Anchor is earned, not given to a Marine. Becoming an Eagle Scout puts you on the path that great men have earned and walked down that will provide you with the tools to achieve great things in your life. Some people go through life wondering if they made a difference. Eagle Scouts and Marines don't have that problem. Marine Corps, uh, the Marine Corps has a saying, once a Marine, always a Marine. That also stands true for Eagle Scouts. Once an Eagle Scout, always an Eagle Scout. On behalf of the Department of Michigan Marine Corps League, I would like to congratulate you on your achievement. Enjoy the adventure that life brings you, uh, brings your way, and keep pushing forward, just like Marine would. Sincerely, David Maznas, Department of Michigan Marine Corps League Eagle Scout Coordinator. Okay, this is a certificate of excellence. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Presented to Paul H. Harry Jr. A Boy Scout Troop 279. Congratulations on receiving the highest rank in Boy Scout organization. As an Eagle Scout, you're committed to live by the Scout laws displayed an image for all to admire. I salute your accomplishment. John Gleason. And okay, now I would like to have uh, Marcus Herring come up and uh, give what Carl Levin, the United States Senator, has given to Paul. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. All right. All right, so we have a letter from the State Senate, Carl Levin. It reads, uh, Dear Paul, it is my pleasure to congratulate you on attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. The honor speaks quite highly of you, and you have every reason to be proud. It takes a great deal of skill, diligence, and determination to achieve this high-respected rank. Clearly, you are a leader among your fellow Scouts and an asset to your community. I commend you for these accomplishments, and I encourage you to continue such pursuit in the future. Again, I extend my heartiest congratulations to you on this memorial event in your life. My very best wishes for success in all of your future endeavors. Sincerely, Carl Levin. Um, we also have something here from our mayor, Dane Walling. Uh, certificate of Achievement presented to Paul H. Herring, Jr. for achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. As Paul joins with his family and friends at a special Eagle Scout Court of Honor, may he know that his achievements are a source of great pride in the greater Flint community and it inspires others to reach for their dreams. We invite the citizens of Flint to join us as we congratulate Paul H. Herring Jr. as his outstanding achievement, on his outstanding achievement. Um, presented this day, Mayor Dane Walling, City of Flint. Okay, at this time I would like to bring up Mr. Herring Sr., so he can uh, give Paul his award. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. No, that wasn't good enough. Good evening. Good evening. 
evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. All right, great. <laughs> Listen, we've got a, um, a special tribute from our legislators here in Lansing. I want you to know that when he started Scouts, I didn't need these. <laughs> and I'm not happy about needing them now. And it states from the state of Michigan, a special tribute to Paul H. Herring, Jr., Esquire. Let it be known that it is with deep appreciation for the hard work and leadership that this accomplishment represents that we congratulate Paul H. Herring, Jr., Esquire of Flint upon the occasion of his rise to the rank of Eagle Scout. This achievement signifies qualities that are very much admired by the people of this state as an indication of talent and industriousness that will be a great value to our state and our nation in years to come. With troop number 279, Paul H. Herring, Jr. Esquire has taken full advantage of the opportunities for personal growth that have made the Boy Scouts one of the most universally respected organizations in our country. Like those before him, Eagle Scout Paul H. Herring, Jr. Esquire has displayed unselfishness and eagerness to accept responsibility. Paul H. Herring, Jr. Esquire, the son of Paul, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and Angela, that's right. <laughs> has followed this tradition to the position he has held with his troop, his participation in civic activities, and the completion of his Eagle Service Project. In addition to his own merit badges, he has helped other scouts work on theirs. The famed Boy Scout motto, Be Prepared, takes on new meaning when meeting an Eagle Scout like Paul H. Herring, Jr. Esquire. Through this accomplishment, there can be little doubt that he is well prepared to take on the challenges that await him in adulthood. Clearly, the lessons he learned with Troop 279 will long continue to reap many rewards. In special tribute, therefore, this document is signed and dedicated to congratulate Paul H. Herring, Jr. Esquire, as he becomes an Eagle Scout. We challenge him to continue his excellent efforts in all aspects of his life. And it's signed by Jim Ananek, State Representative, Woodrow Stanley, State Representative, John Gleason, State, Rep State Senator, David D. Uh, B. Robertson, State Senator, Richard Hamill, State Representative, and Joseph Graves, State Representative, as well as Charles Smiley, our State Representative. And it's at the bottom here, it says the 96th Legislature at Lansing on Thursday, December 13th, 2012. Spirit of public speaking, so I'm going to actually take this opportunity to acknowledge. Um, I really need to acknowledge this woman because she played a big part in our lives and in Paul's life as a youngster, and that would be Mrs. E. Hill Deloney. Through the Coalition for Positive Youth Development and the Axel program, Paul Jr. had many wonderful experiences made possible by her and her organization. And to the rest of you, I really need to thank you for all the support you've given my son over the years. He appreciates it, and we appreciate it. Uh, I guess I should give this to you, shouldn't I? Okay. <laughs> I'll take it on. Okay, now at this, per at this time, I would like to uh, invite uh, Nick Hayes, which is one of our other Eagles, in the past uh, to come up and talk about to Alpine Council. Dear Paul, congratulations on achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. You have set yourself apart by your achievements, marked as one who sets goals, perseveres, leads, and helps others. The Scout Oath and Scout Law have become a part of your daily living. We believe your scouting experience and this achievement will serve you well throughout your life. Since 1910, over 3,360 Scouts have earned the Eagle rank within the area served by the Tall Pine Council. We are proud to have you join this distinguished group. Sincerely, Paul W. Schwartz, Scout Executive. Okay, at this time, we would like the honor guard to escort Paul Herring's mother and father up to this up to the stage, please. Bobby.
Dallas Burris lineup. I'm handing these awards to Paul. I'm going to ask you to exchange his neckerchief for that. Don't be afraid to get close. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the hardest slide for him to put on, so. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on this pocket so that you don't have to reach inside your shirt. Okay, as you've seen, uh, Mark has handed the uh, parent pins um, showing that they're proud parents of an eagle. And this is uh, Paul's eagle pin. Here's your patch, which uh, you will never be able to put on your shirt because you can't get it in time. You're right. If you would, uh, we'd like to have an Eagle Scout in the troop for a while, but there you go. And right here, um, this is your Eagle Scout uh, card, and because I don't have my glasses on, I'll let you read it. Yay! Paul Harling Herring Jr. They both don't play as far as that guy. Has satisfactorily completed the requirements and is hereby certified as an Eagle Scout. It's mine. Back, yeah. yeah, on the back of the card, uh, it also says uh, the National Eagle Scout Association invites you to join a distinguished group of, explore, of world explorers, national leaders, and other accomplished individuals as a member of NISA. Or 
which is National Eagle Scout Association. Oh, right. See what your fellow Eagle Scouts uh, are up to by visiting yeah, the website. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can join a distinguished group, which you're already part of. Another. All right. Okay. Beautiful. Mark. year scout. Some of you I've known since working as a, as a full-time staff member. Uh, I have NYLT here, uh, staff here with me who uh, <laughs> we've had some crazy times together. <laughs> we've done uh, some funny things. Yep. Uh, we've done some uh, cool things. things. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a family. You guys I consider just as part, much a part of my family as I consider my camp staff and my family and all my friends. Um, to those of you who aren't affiliated with the Boy Scouts who are still here today. I really appreciate you because obviously you, you've helped me be here, like Mr. Loney, who uh, my dad talked about earlier. You've, uh, you've been there for me since I was a baby. Like, I didn't know it. I mean, I was a little kid. I, I mean, I was a baby. <laughs> but you were looking out for me. My mom was looking out for me. My dad was looking out for me. Uh, Aunt Sheila, you were looking out for me. Fred and Odette, you guys have been there for me. Uncle Steve, Eric, uh, Mr. Stafford, Mr. Snyder, Chris Matheson, um, just all of you have been there for me and I'm very thankful. Uh, sitting in there in that chair, I mean, it might not have looked like it, but I was, I was getting emotional. I thought I was gonna cry there for a second. And I, was like, I am, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, come on now, toughen up, toughen up. Uh, Eagle Scouts don't cry. But, uh, and like so many of the letters have said, Eagle Scout is in the end, it's the beginning of a lifelong journey that I'm doing, uh, that I've been a part of. And for me, this is uh, it's more than just about being a Boy Scout, it's more than just a service project, it's more than just, than just this badge or this negative for the slide or anything like that. To me, it's, I started, I started in Cub Scouts. I started as a Tiger Cub in kindergarten. And then I moved on to being a Cub Scout. And I really enjoyed being a Cub Scout. And all the activities I had with uh, my PAC 282 that we had at school, with, that, I, that I was in with uh, Josh Stafford and some old members in the tr And like my little brother too. And I just really enjoy it. <laughs> Your little brother? My little brother. Come here, Marcus. Come here. I'm not talking about the height. No. Leave it alone. <laughs> but I mean, and even though like Cub Scouts, you are like more sheltered and like a, but obviously at the age you're going to be, uh, I had fun going to camp outs, going to Pinewood Derbies, doing little fun activities at the school and our gym. And then, when my, my parent, well, when uh, Miss Stafford talked to me about wanting, thinking about going to Boy Scouts, like I didn't hesitate. I was like, of course I want to be a Boy Scout. And so many, and telling people, like I have no shame in telling people that I'm a Boy Scout. And I've had no shame from the very beginning because some people view it as, I don't know, like. I can vouch for that. He has no shame. <laughs> I have. <laughs> 
I mean, some of, like people don't really understand the hard work and the dedication and the kind of people that are actually in the organization. Like nowadays in society, all you see is the negatives uh, in all organizations, but people fail to see the positive and the good that it does. And Joe, before before being in Boy Scouts, uh, some of you may know this, or may not. I had a really bad temper. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd rage. Had. <laughs> and I'm reformed. <laughs> I'll, I'll completely get rid of it. But, <laughs> uh, Boy Scouts was that uh, was that discipline was that um, teacher for me. Okay. Uh, our old scoutmaster David Hayes. <laughs> he's like a second father to me, and um, unfortunately he's not here. And I mean, he's a really great man, and he did a lot for me, and uh, a lot <laughs> for a lot of kids. And uh, the true. And uh, without him, that definitely wouldn't be. I wouldn't be uh, standing in front of you guys talking. Uh, I wouldn't have done as well as I did in uh, high school. I wouldn't have been able to uh, go to a Big Ten school, Michigan State University. This is a letter from Senator Debbie Stabenow. So, Dear Paul, congratulations on achieving the Boy Scouts' highest rank, the Eagle Scout Award. I commend you for your dedication to the philosophy of scouting. As you know, an Eagle Scout must display skills in leadership, communication, outdoorsmanship, teaching, and civic involvement to receive this award. Your leadership and service project in your community definitely demonstrates these admirable characteristics. I join your family and friends in sharing the pride of your outstanding accomplishments. Your dedication, effort, and service to others are an inspiration to all. I wish you success in all of your future endeavors. Sincerely, Debbie. That's how she signed it on first name basis. Nice. <laughs> United States Senate. The Boy Scouts of America is proud to award the rank of Eagle Scout to Paul Harlan Herring, Jr. Supposed to be an Esquire there. Troop 279, Flint, Michigan, in recognition of successful completion of all requirements for scouting, high, scouting's highest rank, September 16th, 2012. And um, there's a lot of signatures on here from the BSA president, um, which are hard to read. I see Wayne Brock here as the chief scout executive. Um, the commissioner, which is a scribble, and I, I'm not that well known, well, you know, into that stuff or knowing who that is. This guy here, I don't have to really um, be able to read his name because it says Honorary President of the Boy Scouts of America, Barack Obama. Nice. Uh, hello, my name is Dave Hayes. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm an assistant scoutmaster. Obviously, in this <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it here tonight, especially given this time of year. Uh, I'm very happy and proud to be here. Uh, I would like to say right off the bat, first of all, thank you to all of you people, because if you're sitting in here today, then you are significant. And his ability to achieve this, If you're not aware, my father was Scott Minister for a very long time here, and the one that he was making reference to. So this is a little bit emotional, but uh, uh, in dealing with Paul, I've been uh, Advancements Chitty, Chitty, Advancements <laughs> Chair, Committee Chairman. There, that came out right. The Advancements Committee Chairman, and have had the honor of being on his board of review for all of his ranks. Now, Paul was only about this tall when he started. A little bit taller now. And uh, I have been able to watch him grow and develop, not just as a Boy Scout, not just as a boy, but into a man. Yep. In becoming a man and moving on, I think that it's very important 
that he understands, and all of us are aware, the things that we have accomplished reflect on what we have done. But in Achieving Eagle, there is more to this than just what we have managed to do. It's what we have yet to do. Now, scouting is full of life lessons. Life itself is a trail. Very often we find diverging paths. We have to make choices. We have to learn to live with those choices as we make them. One of the rules we've always had is that we always want to leave it better than the way we found it, regardless of which path we take. So that when we have reached the end of our trail, we can look back at a legacy that we have created. And that's what is supposed to be important for now. Given that, I would like to introduce the most recent Eagle Scout, Nicholas Hayes, to issue the Eagle Charge. Eagle Scout is a great accomplishment. Being an Eagle Scout is a great responsibility. As an Eagle, the Scout Elf and the Scout Law should take on new meaning for you. The motto and slogan take on new urgency. As an Eagle, your first obligation is to live with honor. You are a marked man, a leader, for good or ill. People will follow the example you set. Give up anything before you give up your reputation and good name. As Shakespeare said, mine honor is my life. Both grow in one. Take honor from me, and my life is done. Let the white of the Eagle Badge remind you of honor. Your second obligation as an Eagle Scout is to be loyal. As a follower, you promise to be loyal to those above you. Now, as a leader, you must be loyal to those below you, treating them as you would want to be treated. You must also be loyal to your ideals, not letting others sway you from your course. Let the blue of the Eagle Badge remind you of loyalty. Your third obligation as an Eagle Scout is to be courageous. Stepping into your new role as a leader, you will face many challenges and obstacles. A ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are for. You must have the courage to do what is right, no matter what other people do or say. Let the red eagle badge remind you of courage. Your fourth obligation is to serve others, for a leader is above all a servant. Let the practice of a daily good turn lead to a lifetime of service, for only in giving of yourself do you give anything of value. Just as it always has, let the scroll of your badge remind you of service. Your final obligation is an Eagle Scout to have vision. As a leader, you must now blaze your own trail. Just as a bald eagle soaring high above the ground can look far into the distance, so too must you look far into the future. Many people will follow you. Only with vision will you lead them in the right direction. Let the silver eagle hanging from your badge remind you of, your vision, remind you of vision. These, then, are your obligations as an Eagle Scout. Honor, loyalty, courage, service, and vision. By meeting these obligations, you can lead your troop, your community, your nation toward a better tomorrow. Nice. Right. Please lead us in the Scout Elf. Scout Science. On my honor, I will, I will do, do my best to do my duty to guide my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Two. Same applies to everybody, uh, youth and adult in my troop. David Hayes, young, as I put him in my phone, young David Hayes. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's been there since since I first joined this troop, and he's definitely been an uh, inspiration to me. Uh, Miss Hayes. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I appreciate everything you've done for me, and uh, I hope that if there's ever anything that you need, that if if I can help you, just let me know. Um, 
Uh, you. Okay, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> uh, we've had our good times together. We've had our bad times together. Uh, but through it all, you've been there for me, and I appreciate that. Uh, you, you weren't there when I first joined the troop, but you came in later. And the things that, even though you were the troop for a very brief time, I learned a lot from you, and I, and I, uh, I appreciate all the things you've done for me. And I'm, I'm glad that you came to our troop because you, you taught me a lot of things about being a person, being a better per man, being a better scout, being a better leader. Um, <laughs> the men who conducted the ceremony, Mr. Beasley and Mr. Berlinski, they had uh, big, big shoes to fill when Mr. Hayes died. And that's, it's impossible for anybody to ever fill his shoes. But I think they've done a pretty good job up to this point. They've done a pretty good job. And toward, even though uh, Mercedes wasn't here for the last part of me making my journey through scouting, they were. And I really appreciate everything you guys have done for me. Miss Beasley, that includes you too, because you're always in the background. <laughs> Helping out, <laughs> Miss Miss Berlinski, you as well. Oh, we're serving that good lunch food at school. <laughs> <laughs> the hookup, <laughs> and also helping me out whenever I needed you in school as well. And that was always great to appreciate. It. So, um, yeah, it'd be good. Um, so, I'd like everybody to please give a hand for my troop because they. Uh, I don't know if I'm talking too long. <laughs> it's your, your night, baby. Do what you got to do. Just go. Just go. Or anything like that. Um, I mean, I, if, I, if I talked about everybody that's impacted me throughout my life, I'd be here forever. So We got time. <laughs> um, Tell them about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. Tell them about me. <laughs> 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 uh, like you've been um, that cool uncle, that real cool uncle that you know that you talk to when you have problems at home, and you, you can't talk to your dad about it because he's the one that's irritating you. <laughs> you can't talk to your mom about it because she's just not a guy and she doesn't understand. Uh, and I, two facts though. <laughs> and I, I mean. You've recently come into my life, but you've been, you've been there for me you've, in the short time you've been there, and I really appreciate you. Right? We love you, baby. <laughs> Actually, look, you've been there since day one. I appreciate you too. Um, I'm glad you were able to make it. And a smile crept, crept, <laughs> crept across my face as I saw you sneaking in. <laughs> um, Mr. Matheson, you bought. Uh, School, school-wise, you were you were my father at school. I guess is what I could say. You were you were never shy to chew me out whenever I did anything wrong at school. I always kept me in line, made sure I lived up to the, what you saw I could be. And uh, what you expected from me. And we always need that. We always need that person there checking us, whether it's in school, whether it's scouting, whether it's in just life in general. And you were that person for me at school, and I, I appreciate everything you've done for me. You buy. You've done a lot. I mean, my dad hasn't even taken me to England. <laughs> but you were able to take me there, and I and not that it was just given to me. I worked hard to get there, but I appreciate that opportunity. I haven't takes, been to England either. <laughs> takes a village. <laughs> so uh, with that being said, I mean, I'd just like all of you guys to give yourselves a round of applause for this being here tonight. Uh, friend on that, I didn't forget you guys. You guys have been there for me. Uh, and my mom, actually. That's, that's what I really appreciate the most, being there for my mom. And she... She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love her. 
Just give him Thank you, Mom. With just you guys being there for her, it just means you've been there for me. So I appreciate that. Uh, bro. Says <laughs> it all. It really does. In the all, in just that one word. We've done everything together. Uh, student life, scouting, uh, summer jobs together, sports together. Uh, England? Sleeping in, yeah, England together. Same bedroom together. <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's been tough at college without you there. I always tell my friends, like, damn, dang, dang. <laughs> <laughs> One man. <laughs> like, the only thing that could make college any better is if my little brother was here with me. And you'll be there soon, so yeah. get yourself right. together and you'll be there with me and we can enjoy it together like it's meant to be. Uh, I'm there for you. You've been there for me and I appreciate everything you've done for me, bro. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, particularly, I'd, uh, two, uh, two men that have uh, recently entered my life, but uh, have uh, definitely helped me come directly, or directly related to me being in this podium, directly related to my Eagle Scout project. Uh, could Chris and Joe, could you two please stand up? Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. gentleman that just stood, uh, first Joe, Mr. Joe, he was uh, not one gallon pint liter of paint that I have to pay for because it was all donated by that man there. Nice. So I really appreciate what you did for me. <laughs> well, Mr. Uh, Belinsky was talking about uh, the trial is going through and doing the service project. One of the biggest trials is just trying to figure out how it's going to get the paint to do these murals. And I started off big. I called Lowe's, called Home Depot, called all these people like, hey, Scout, trying to do some good. Can you help me? <laughs> and, uh, and I just never heard back from them. And uh, then I, I went local. I called people, and they wouldn't either. They wouldn't answer. or. Uh, They'd answer. They they couldn't do they couldn't do it. And that's understandable. But uh, when I called you, as soon as soon as I talked to you, you were eager to help me, and and with your help, I, I was able to do this. Uh, Mr. Chris, uh, he supplied the he Mr. Joe supplied the supplies, but you helped with the vision, with the creative vision and artistic for me to actually put it on the wall. Um, you, uh, you spent some hours there with me. <laughs> with me, uh, transit, like learning how to fade colors and give me artistic input on the designs I had. And it was all, it was all, work, it was all, it was all very helpful. And I, I thank you for what you did and the time you donated. Uh, so thank you both. Like, even though I've known you such a very little time, you guys have both made a great impact. Um, I mean, I've already talked about NYT, I've already talked about camp, but you guys, you guys uh, definitely home away from home for me. Camp Topico is going to suck this summer without Camp Topico there. But we'll manage, <laughs> we'll, we'll manage and we'll become better people because of it. NYT, you guys. Even though I'd like to say I was a leader <laughs> before I went to you guys' program, I've definitely improved as being a leader, being able to communicate effectively with people, uh, being able to guide people, help them, and things like that. And so I'll give your guys' help. Gladys, Dave, Jay, <laughs> CJ. Uh, I appreciate you guys. You guys did a lot, man. Uh, you know, thank everybody in individual in this room. Uh, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. 
You were there. Yeah. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm you, pretty much. I mean, in that show. Uh, Choose your I'm, next I'm, word. Uh, I'm happy to say that I have both my parents in my life. Most urban city kids can't say that. Uh, and you, you're always the strict one. <laughs> always the, the one bringing down the hammer when I messed up. But uh, it, it's all for a reason. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It, was all, it was all for a reason. Uh, at times, I really did not enjoy conversations we had because, you know, let's get kicked or something. But uh, as a kid, you always you always go like, oh, I'd never do that when I get older. Oh, I'd never do that. Yeah, I'm not doing that. But uh, as I'm growing up and I'm think, I think about the things you told me as I've grown up, it's true. I mean, you've been there, done that. <laughs> been there, done everything I've thought. <laughs> you've thought all the things I've thought. You've done all the things I've done. Probably even more that I haven't even done yet, but you'll tell me about that later. <laughs> <laughs> 18, 21. <laughs> so, thank you. The same applies to mom. I love you, mom. Yeah. Crazy, like I already said, but I still love Your you. Your mom's a sweet person, she ain't done. <laughs> uh, you're always that uh, serious person, always making me reflect and look upon my life. And you always wanted me to get the most out of life. And at times I got tired of hearing of it because that's all. It, because I don't like to think about life as a whole. I like to live in the moment. But it, you, have to, you have to know where you're going. And you've always taught me to look ahead. And so I appreciate I, I love you and appreciate you for that. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> uh, could you all please buy your hands for the rest of the food? Bless us, O Lord, for these thy gifts which we're about to receive from the rest of our bodies. Um, the Lord, I ask that you bless each and every person in this room, um, for not only have they touched my life, but I'm sure they've touched the life of someone else. And it, it takes great strength, it takes great moral character, it takes great <coughs> self-awareness self to not only be there for yourself, but to be there for the other, others around you. And so that I, so I, God, I ask you to, that you please bless each and every individual in this room. For, for everybody has their trials in life, everybody has their problems. And I ask that you help guide these people in the room through whatever they're going through, whether it be a financial situation, a personal, a health issue. Just be there to give that uh, guiding hand to their salvation and to their, to, to self-preservation so that they, they can continue to not only help themselves, but to help those around them. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.